You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. Welcome everyone to this brand new, low, low quality recording. That's right, I'm so busy today. I'm not even parked up to record you this episode of G Wandering. I'm doing this shit while I drive, multitasking. Hopefully you don't hear me die in real time as I'm too distracted by the goings on in New Japan. But you have tuned in to Okada Shorts G Wandering. I'm up to night. Night 11 of the G1 Climax 33. I am your bad friend, Rafe Hewson, one half of the International Wrestling Grand Prix, the kings of pod style, the kings of shorts, Okada Shorts, and this is another bite size, low quality episode of G Wondering. So let's not waste any time because I'm actually in a 12 minute commute over to uh, a business that I have to deal with. So. I'm going to get this out and pop it. Um, the first match opened up with Hikuleu versus Kaido Kiyomiya. Um, Kaido, man, I wish he was just in New Japan. Hey, what a great loan in from Noah and absolutely killing it in this tournament. And and he made Hikuleu look like a beast here. I thought it was really cool. Uh, they're ratcheting up the drama of will Kaido get out of the block. I'm on the fence. I don't know if he'll do it. Um, Ren Narita is maybe positioned to spoil him, but I don't think he's been this good in this tournament. So it might be his big win of the tournament, but if that comes at like the expense of Kaido not going to the finals, I think that's a real shame because I think he'd had some great matches with the guys coming up. Also, I've given Hikaleo his fair of criticism over the course of this. But again, just how good he can look with an opponent that knows how to make him look good and, and you know, will bump him out for him and, and, you know, make him look really strong. So I think it's really good. And is Hikaleo his finished product? Absolutely not. He's literally only the beginning, but I'm starting to see the upside. So that left me in a pretty good spot. And yeah, Hikaleo again, the win with that godsend choke slam after only nine minutes. Impressive. Yoshihashi versus Great Okan was up next. Um, I wonder what this one means. Great Okan finally getting a win in this tournament. It feels like he's been losing constantly um, over Yoshihashi. Maybe we see, I don't know, again a United Empire Bishamon rivalry for the tag titles. Maybe that's what they're setting up here. If they do, I don't know. I'm not sure if I, I want that. That's where I want to see Okan because he's now picked up a win over Yoshihashi and he's picked up a win over Tai Chi. So I think I'd prefer to see him in that King of Pro Wrestling space. And if I was seeing anybody picking up wins over um, the United Empire, I would like it to be Jeff Cobb. And I think he did. I think he beat Goto. But the team from the United Empire, I think Aaron Hanare and and Jeff Cobb together as a team would be my preferred team than Okan being in that space. But if they had to, Okan and Hanare do work together and that would be really cool. So we can only hope. Uh, also, special note to Yoshihashi, despite, uh, again, criticism by <laughs> Ledru about being a very awkward little man, he's a great wrestler and he, he does great things in these tournaments. And he, he's not one of the guys that you put on the list to not see in the G1 next year. Um, after that, we had Ren Narita uh, versus Chase Owens. Again, Ren Narita, man. I'm not super convinced by him, and Chase, I don't terribly care uh, at all. 
So this was this was a match that happened, uh, and Narita won with the Cobra Twist that did not look this that good. So yeah, I don't know. This uh, this is some of the, the the down parts of the big tournament. Sometimes you get these matchups that just don't work. Uh, after that was Tai Chi versus El Phantasmo. Loved this match. Uh, loved the charisma. Loved uh, how much uh, El Phantasmo likes Tai Chi. Liked him trying to use his microphone. And a great match. And then um, also ELP using Tai Chi's own Gato Clutch against him. It, it, literally, they've got the match here. ELP style, Tai Chi style Gato Clutch, which I fucking love. That's so funny. Um, and yeah, maybe maybe this is the big comeback for ELP here. Maybe he spoils Will on the last night and sees himself in the finals. And I don't fucking hate that. Uh, depending how it lays out, if he... You'd ha you've got to correct me here on the layout and things like that. Maybe that sees ELP rerun in to Finlay again, which could be interesting uh, as that rivalry continues. So yeah, uh, yeah, ELP getting the win over Tai Chi and potentially a King of Pro Wrestling title shot. Uh, after that was Sonata versus Gabe Kidd. Now, sip of my coffee. Uh, one drink for the working man, as they say. Um, now this match, I got to tell you guys, I saw a monumental, a monumental thing take place during this match. Now anybody that's listened to Okada's shorts has heard about the mythical Amy 180. That's right, my wife can be quite opinionated on wrestling and make snap decisions about wrestlers, whether she likes them or dislikes them. And this can go either way. But she lives and dies by those decisions. And what's... And if she doesn't like somebody and she 180s on them and likes them, then she's ride or die with them. And that's how it is. Hate until love is basically how it works. Now, Amy's not a big Sonata fan, especially after going to Sakura Genesis and seeing him beat her precious Okada. She is fucking off Sonata. Off him. No, hasn't been a big Gabe Kid fan. He's carrying on about nothing. I can't understand him. <laughs> I don't understand English accents well. All these things. Look at this fucking idiot. He's carried on as he comes out. I'm like, nah, Gabe's good, man. He's putting in a lot of effort. He's putting in hard work. I've really enjoyed his matches. Nah. Exact words from Amy Houston. I could never be about this guy. I would literally never be a fan of his. Within seconds of her uttering this sentence, he takes a chair and he wraps it straight over the head of Sonata. She's just like, on, like, within seconds, I could never be a fan of Gabe Kidd. I love Gabe Kidd. Within, couldn't even take a breath. And then Gabe Kidd is on the fucking side of the ring, both fingers up. Amy's got her fingers up as well. She's like, let's fucking go. Looking like Little Pound Cake from Ru RuPaul's Drag Race. There's a throwback for you. A motherfucking dick pig. Fingers up to the world. Biggest Gabe Kid fan in the world. And then she was completely engaged for the rest of the match and fucking furious when he didn't pull off the win. I gotta tell you, it, it's the most fun I had in the tournament. I love watching wrestling with my wife. I don't get to do it nearly as much as I would like to. But when she's about it, and when like a wrestler fucking earns her love, she's fucking ride or die for them. And it made it so fun, and I absolutely loved the match. Um, I, I think Gabe's just done so well in this tournament. Um, really just getting himself over. It's like a perfect example of like, you know, I think New Japan creativity, you know, creative, they don't give them a lot to work with. And then they have, but they have that freedom to expand on it. So then when you see somebody like that, just take it, take the time, speak to the thing. Him picking up the belt and being like, look at the fucking future. And like, at one point he just like runs a lariat at Sonata and he just goes, fuck you Sonata. Like he just puts so much into it. The move where he like will hang the guy, like he's hanging Sonata by his neck while he stands on the second rope. There's just so much malice in his offense, and it was it was just really, really cool. 
and everything he's done, he's just working so hard. And after everything he went through in previous years, through COVID and his like his troubles with his mental health and stuff like that, it's just so fucking cool to see, man. So I really liked it, and we're both on board in a big way. Um, she's like, what team is Gabe Kidd in? She already knows this because she's asked me before. Uh, she's like, he would be really cool with like like ELP or something. And I'm like, he's with the, like the War Dogs at Bullet Club. And she's like, ugh, losers. And I'm like, nah, I think the way it's sort of heading will be, you know, I think he's going to end up in charge of that faction eventually. And she's like, that would be fucking cool. So I hope that happens. Sonata was also in this match. Um, he He was good. I still, you know, I could definitely use more fighting spirit from Sonata and more effort, but he's uh, like that thinking man's champion thing came out and he managed to pull out the win. I still think, man, he's got this block locked up. He could have taken this loss. Could have taken the loss, be it by bullshit or whatever. And by the way, for the fucking babyface champion, he was doing an awful lot of cheating in this match. I know, like, faces could cheat back against heels, but we was, we saw a dick kick from him. We saw him grabbing the tights. Are you serious? This man is false. Give me Gabe Kidd as the rightful champion in the future. And, you know, had he taken that loss, fucking some bullshit, he could have set up, like, a cool UK match for the upcoming stuff in Wembley, and it would be the most engaging fucking thing that Sonata's done since champion. So, yeah, besides Suji, which Suji also carried that. So, anyway, uh, good match and had a lot of time with it. It was my best match of the night. Uh, next one, Tungaloa versus Will Ospreay. I was like, this is where we find out what Tungaloa has. Because if Will, Will fucking Osprey can't give you an interesting match, then you can't have an interesting match. And homie, this was like probably Will's most boring match of the thing. I don't know whether I was just completely unengaged because it was Tungaloa, but there wasn't a lot going on. And then him getting the win as well. I know they love to throw in these kind of things. You know, they've got to make up the numbers, give him a big win and shit. But why? I mean, really, what are you going to do with Tungaloa? Like, that could have gone to somebody else that I think would have been, you know, a more valuable win over him. You know, I still think Great Khan taking the win would have been the move. But, yeah. Anyway, that was a match that happened. Um, and I was actually surprised that for the top guys of the block, uh, Osprey and Okada, they weren't best matches of the night here. Uh, next up was Shooter and Yoda Suji. Love this one. Love the competitiveness between the two. And was fucking stoked that um, Big Suj got the win there. Finally hit that spear, cut Shooter in half and took that win. I wonder that if that means he can take the block. Um, that would be cool, whether he comes out first or second. I would like Suji to to be the guy that gets out. If not Kaito, I would like it to be him. Uh, and then Okada versus Kenta. I mean, what can Okada do here? Again, if you can't have a fucking super engaging match with Kazuchika Okada, can you have it with anyone? And, um, you know, not really, I guess. Like, it was okay, but Kenta, for me, isn't hitting... He's, he's at his best when he's doing some fun shenanigans and stuff, and I can see him in more of a Naito role going forward. But, you know, maybe package it with House of Torture as like a goofy heel and, you know, do that kind of thing. Um, as far as the Pickums go, let's have a quick peeky over at the Pickums. Your boy's still in front. He didn't take much as... Uh, it was finally the time I was dreading where my two guys had to versus each other, Tai Chi versus ELP. So that was only two points for the pair of them and then showed a loss. But I picked up that big win the other day. So where I had all three and everybody else had zero. So at the moment, the standings are Travis on 14, Curtis on 19, Amy on 21 and me on 26. But hey, tomorrow the others have got more wrestlers in those blocks. I've only got Finlay. Um, Maybe Finlay can pick up a win for me. That would be very nice of him if he could do that and continue what I hoped he would do, which is being super, super dominant. Um, in the meantime, I want to thank everybody for listening. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Please check out our sister shows at Throw and Dice Pod for Curtis's Wargaming Podcast at Faces Feels Cast for my interview series. 
and check out our sister shows, Hot Friends, over at the Count Out Podcast Network. Out, um, you can check out the Patreon there. Only five dollars a month, you can get our Drop Your Short show uh, on there, as well as all the other great shows on the Count Out Network. Um, and Curse of a Dive got some really fun plans for Drop Your Shorts coming up on the other side of G Wandering. So. Tune back in. Your good friend Curtis Spears will be back tomorrow with C&D Block. And then I have Saturday, Sunday for A and B. And then he's got Tuesday, Wednesday for C&D. And then we're into the finals. We've also got plans to touch base with some friends and do a mega show leading up into that final week. Hopefully that all still goes to plan and hit your feed and everybody will have a very fun time as we, uh, let's say, work stiff as we look over the G wandering. So let's check that out. Thank you for listening. Keep it right. Keep it tight. And most importantly, rate and subscribe. Listen or die and keep it. Short. This has been a Count Out Podcast. So, Curtis. Yeah, man. Count Out said we've got to do an ad. I've never done one before. Uh, what should we do? I have no idea, bro. I, I, like, I ever made an ad before. What, what, what are we doing an ad for? I don't know. We just say we're like a New Japan Pro Wrestling podcast, and we just put a bunch of clips like here. Arguably the most shredded guy. So yeah. you really want to get there, too. <laughs> uh, I, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. We'll see. Heard that here, Michael Richards calling Jay White small compared to him. <laughs> here, uh, I love it. This picture you've painted for me, I, I want to hang it up. I want to frame it and hang it up in my in my bedroom. Yeah, uh, we don't have a WWE tryout or a New Japan tryout every second week, and now I'm in Bullet Club. And here, Will Osprey versus Kenny Omega. Do you want to just go off about this match? How do you? take or talk about one of i think probably the best matches you've ever seen that's an ad right yeah yeah that works that that that's that's brilliant because then all our work's already been done for us and we don't have to do anything aha past us did it present us living in the now look at us look, look at, at us being friggin' brilliant Mate, minimum effort maximum output okada shorts podcast check it out on the count out network at okada shorts rate and subscribe listen or die